Hello viewers and welcome to yet another Warhammer 40,000 Conquest video production. My name is Mitch and I am the Hive Tyrant. Today I'm pleased to present the fifth of a series of videos in which I'll be reviewing each Warlord from our first cycle of War Packs, the Warlord Cycle, as well as their associated signature squad, all within the context of the card pool available when those cards relevant expansion was first released. Considering that each Warlord has a unique playstyle which dictates how their surrounding deck is built and subsequently played by covering Warlords and War Packs separately, hopefully all of these videos will remain relevant and informational to both new and veteran players alike for as long as possible. Each new, future expansion should simply build upon and complement the foundation laid out by each previous publication and its associated cards. However, considering that at the time of this recording we've seen the release of the entire Warlord cycle, the Great Devourer Deluxe expansion, and indeed even begun to open some of our Planetfall cycle war packs, I will have the benefit of some significant foresight when it comes to assessing the utility and evolution of each of these cards. So, in this specific video, I'll be taking a look at the second Astra Militarum faction warlord, Torque Maracotes, and focusing on the strengths and weaknesses of not only that warlord unit, but also each of the different cards which together constitute his signature squad. And soon I'll analyze and assess all of the non signature faction specific cards introduced in the Threat Beyond War Pack. In doing so, this should result in a relatively short war. Warlord centric video, as well as a much longer war pack encompassing production. But with that said, on to today's Warlord, Torque Maracotes. He is a unique Warlord unit with a starting hand size of 8, 8 starting resources, a printed attack value of 0, and a pool of 8 hit points. He has the Soldier and Inquisitor traits and reads combat action. Sacrifice a unit at this planet to give this warlord plus three attack for its next attack, this phase, limit once per attack. Then, upon being bloodied, Kotiaz becomes a much more conventional yet still surprisingly durable unit with no ability but an attack value of one, and he maintains six printed hit points. So, Kotiaz is a fascinatingly unconventional warlord, with a significant number of fairly exclusive strengths, but also also several inherent weaknesses. Of all warlords thus far, he is certainly the most durable, but he's not just resilient, he's also potentially the hardest hitting, highest damage output capable warlord. But though he can attack for 3, he can only do so upon your sacrificing a unit, and that unit needs to be at his planet in order to become eligible to be sacrificed. So though his potential is rather significant, conversely in many situations he can't manage to do that, which so many other warlords so easily can. For instance, if left entirely to his own devices, he won't be able to win a battle against even a lone void pirate or rogue trader. He would simply commit to that planet, presumably win command, and then proceed to trigger a battle at that planet. But during combat, because he attacks for zero, and the present enemy unit would also attack for zero, the players would simply experience three consecutive combat rounds of an identical game state, wherein neither unit wants to leave the planet, but they cannot actually damage one another, and therefore, as a result, Kotiaz, as a warlord unit, will be forced to return to his HQ and abandon the planet. He doesn't snipe the enemy economy unit, and he doesn't get the opportunity opportunity to trigger a battle ability, but at the very least because battle did end in a stalemate, your opponent doesn't get to activate that ability either. 
However, to offset this significant zero attack drawback, Kotiaz does receive a wealth of starting cards and resources relative to our other warlords, and so long as he can sacrifice friendly army and or token units, he can hit extraordinarily hard. Plus, considering you can pick and choose when exactly your units are leaving play as the result of his ability, you can use that combat action to either initiate feed into or otherwise maintain any number of various Astra Militarum faction when units leave play, style combos, and synergies. Still, in the earliest stages of a given game, even before you draw into your combo effects, always consider that you can make use of several card effects in order to augment his non-existent base attack. For instance, Katachan Outpost can be used to target your Warlord, and though your opponent can still shield against that attack, which could then force a stalemate, or if their unit you attempted to snipe has even one point of attack value, then your opponent can proceed to simply batter and bloody your warlord one point of damage at a time until they finally convince you to accept your inevitable retreat. And if that assassination attempt does fail on your part, if you're forced to retreat instead of being made to begrudgingly accept a stalemate, then in that case your opponent does win the battle, and therefore does get to trigger the planet's associated battle ability. But, I think one last devious trick for Kotiaz worth mentioning is that it's even possible that, if you don't need to benefit from an attack boost, and even if you aren't involved in combat, you could still trigger his combat action, just to sacrifice a unit, and therefore ensure that your unit total drops equal to, or becomes lower than, your opponent, which could afford you the opportunity to either trigger, or simply prevent your enemy enemy from activating the planet Taurus. But when it comes to Kotiaz, you generally want to provide him with a steady stream of hopefully low cost, ideally already exhausted units to sacrifice, so that you can deal out as much damage to the enemy as is possible. And for that very reason, you'll likely want to include a slightly higher than average number of army units in your deck. And additionally, you'll clearly want to run when this unit leaves play, style synergy and card effects. For instance, every time you mulch one of your own units in order to augment Kotiaz's attack, you can ready a copy of Cadian Mortar Squad as the result of your doing so, affording you to make another attack of one. Or, if you're running Interrogator Acolyte, when it comes time to sacrifice that unit, you'll be able to benefit from drawing two cards. And note that for any of these units, unless the sequence of initiative means it is not safe for you to way to do so, you'll certainly want to stay your hand on sacking units until they've already been exhausted prior to your tossing them, just to derive the utmost value of each and every unit if it's at all possible. Plus, it's also worth considering that any time a soldier or warrior trait unit leaves play, which includes through Kotiaz's sacrifice, you have the opportunity to drop an Elysian Assault team into play, which can afford you the chance to add even more damage on top of Kotiaz's already significant output. And because Kotiaz's ephemeral attack bonus nevertheless persists until your warlord's next attack, if you do decide to drop in in an assault team, feel free to attack with that fragile unit first, just to ensure it doesn't end up being destroyed because you chose to drop it into play only to then swing with your warlord. But as Kotiaz himself is so inviting to synergy, that trend follows in his signature squad, and the first of these happens to be his army unit, Kotiaz's henchmen. For a cost of two, they have one command icon, and a attack value of 1, and 3 printed hit points. They possess the Soldier trait and Interrupt. When this unit leaves play, ready your Warlord. 
So, a subtle effect and an inoffensive unit, but it is nevertheless deceptively powerful. You could sacrifice a unit, attack with your warlord, attack with Kotiaz's henchman, then sacrifice your henchman to Kotiaz, which would not just boost his attack back up to 3, but trigger that interrupt and ready your warlord, allowing him a second attack during the same combat round. These units don't do much damage themselves, but they do possess a command icon, and with 3 HP, they're unlikely to be sniped by an enemy warlord or killed off early in combat. They're therefore likely to be able to survive during battle long enough so that they can be sacrificed by your warlord, and that interrupt ability affords all kinds of provocative opportunities. This would be a relatively inoffensive unit to use in order to fund a suppressive fire so you could exhaust some daunting enemy army unit and then sacrifice this then exhausted unit to Kotiaz, hopefully readying him to swing for three, or perhaps one of Kotiaz's greatest combos, you could combine this unit with the likes of the event Preemptive Barrage in order to front load an enormous amount of damage to any number of existing enemies. For instance, let's say that you start off combat with Kotiaz as a copy of his henchmen and several other units all positioned at the same planet. You could play preemptive barrage and target your warlord, the henchmen, and any other Astra Militarum unit. You could start by sacrificing an exhausted or generally low value unit, perhaps something like a rogue trader or void pirate, which would let Kotiaz attack for three during the range skirmish round. Or you could simply opt to use a catatonic Chan outpost to let him attack for two, or you could also combine all of those various effects. But once Kotiaz has attacked during the range skirmish, you can then attack with his henchmen. They attack for one, and then you can attack with any other remaining ranged units. But before the end of the range skirmish round, each time you can sacrifice a copy of Kotiaz's henchmen to your warlord, your warlord will ready a again, and be able to swing with his boosted attack value of 3, and it's this specific card interaction which makes Kotiaz not just an incredibly aggressive warlord, but which allows him to output a tremendous amount of damage which could easily bloody or destroy an enemy warlord or remove a specific invaluable enemy army unit. And remember that in this kind of scenario, every time a copy of Kotiaz's henchman leaves play, it would not only afford your warlord another opportunity to do another ephemeral ranged keyword attack, but it would have the same effect upon every present copy of Cadian Mortar Squad. Conversely, outside of its mere combat utility, another big benefit that this unit affords you is the opportunity to play Muster the Guard in relative safety. So, during the deploy phase, you exhaust your Warlord, play that event, and then each subsequent AM unit you deploy has its cost reduced by one. Then, once you do get to combat, sacrifice the henchman after it attacks, so you can ready your Warlord and then proceed to attack for three, or if things are looking desperate, you can instead use that opportunity to retreat. And if you're ever interested in altering the outcome or math of a given combat dramatically, feel free to use Staging Ground to surprisingly drop a copy of Kotiaz's henchman into play, allowing it to not only contribute its own attack to the battle, but of course to also afford your warlord another rather significant swing. Still, with our intriguing signature army unit covered, now on to Kotiaz's unique attachment, the Glavodan Eagle. For a cost of one, it has three shield icons and the familiar trait. It reads, Attached to your Warlord. Attached Warlord gets plus one attack. Combat action. Detach this card to have it become an army unit with one attack and one HP, and the text, 
action. Return this unit to your hand. So this is a complicated card, but it is both supremely useful and deceptively powerful. Simply by merit of increasing your warlord's attack value by one, it grants him some positive base attack value, which means you immediately need never worry about combat ending in a stalemate due to shielding or any number of other prevention style effects again. But Kotiaz by no means loses his ability and and, upon sacrificing a unit, suddenly attacks for a Colossal 4, which is unheard of for a Warlord, and then, after he successfully attacks, if you deem it safe to do so, you can use a combat action to detach, essentially removing his avian attachment, and then have it attack as an army unit for an additional one, which could be all the damage you need to end up making a substantial difference. You could either leave the eagle there if your opponent retreats, or perhaps you've killed off their last unit, or if you do want to preserve the Glovodan eagle, Eagle, only to be later re-equipped by Kotiaz, you can trigger that action during any phase and immediately return it to hand, which, of course, counts as it having left play, which could also trigger something like Acadian Mortar Squad. Plus, after you've detached this attachment, in returning it to hand, that can also serve as a powerful deploy stall. For instance, you could use the combat action to detach this card, and then use the action during the following round's deploy phase in order to bounce the Glavodan Eagle back to your hand, which you can then replay during your next available opportunity, which, for just one resource, consumes an additional deploy turn for a total of two, or if during combat you need desperately to benefit from shields, you can detach it, return it to hand, and then you're holding a three value shield card. The only problem, of course, is that you want to preserve this attachment by any means possible, and if it ever becomes an army unit, then your opponent can instantly target it with the likes of Zinch's Firestorm, Rotten Plague Bearers, or any number of other direct damage effects. So, fragile for certain, but enormously difficult to pin down, and a card that most definitely raises Kotiaz's power level considerably. It's even possible, albeit unlikely, likely that it can sit at a planet and pose a small threat to the enemy even outside the presence of one's warlord. But because Kotiaz didn't already possess enough synergy, how about a signature support to provide lambs for the slaughter? Next, we see the Formosan Black Ship. For a cost of one, it has the upgrade trait and interrupt. When you sacrifice a non-token unit, exhaust this support to put two guards tokens into play at the same planet as the sacrificed unit. So, if you were looking for a wealth of expendable units prime for sacrifice and slaughter, look no further than this support. The first time you sacrifice a non-token unit, something bound to occur when one's playing Kotiaz, you exhaust this support and spawn two one-attack, two-hit-point soldier trait tokens. Those tokens can then themselves attack and later be sacrificed to Kotiaz to power up additional subsequent war warlord attacks. Or, if you end up winning that combat, or decide to retreat, however that battle ends, those tokens nevertheless persist, whether they simply ready to participate in later battles at that planet, or are instead swept into your HQ, showing up at a planet alongside your warlord exhausted the following round, which provides a sterling opportunity the next turn to sacrifice them. An attack value of 1, may not be much, but it certainly aggregates over time, and the earlier you can see this signature support interplay, the better. And plus, because you need only exhaust it to benefit from that effect, it's entirely possible that you can use a means of readying a support, such as the intrafaction event 
two arms to let you generate an additional pair of tokens during the same game round. In fact, if put into play early, this support by itself could be powerful enough to warrant the inclusion of Engine Seer Augurs in your deck, because whether they end up sacrificed or are simply destroyed, upon leaving play they could easily retrieve this or any other two or lower cost Astra Militarum faction support, and because their printed card ability is an interrupt, that means that it is resolved immediately prior to the resolution of a triggering condition, namely their leaving play via sacrifice. So, as a result, if you do decide to sacrifice them before they leave play, you resolve their interrupt ability in its entirety. If you search the top six cards of your deck and find a Formosan black ship to put into play, you're still within an interrupt window keying off of that sacrifice triggering condition, during which you can activate your freshly played Formosan black ship, and as a result, you would immediately derive benefit from two tokens spawning without any need for Kotiaz to bury or sacrifice additional units. Then, once neither player has any additional interrupts, such as playing an Elysian Assault team as a response to that sacrifice, that interrupt window closes. The Engine Seer Augur finally leaves play, and now players can trigger any eligible reactions to that entire series of events. So, powerful to be sure, and one card effect which feeds perfectly into the Cotillaz synergy. Frankly, it provides you with everything a Cotillaz player could ask for, so if you draw it, I highly recommend you play it at the first available opportunity. Still, last of Cotillaz's signature squad, we of course have an event, the Emperor Protects. For a cost of zero, it has one shield icon, as well as the tactic trait. It reads Interrupt. When a unit you control leaves play from a planet with your warlord, return that unit to your hand instead. So, this event is extraordinarily simple. Whether one of your units is being destroyed or whether it's being sacrificed, you return it to your hand instead of placing it in your discard pile. That way, you not only benefit from your unit leaving play, but you also have the opportunity to play the unit again, potentially allowing you to benefit from some win enters or exits play style effect an additional time. This could allow you to re redeploy a destroyed or sacrificed unit to the same planet at which it was once positioned during a subsequent deploy phase, or instead you could simply choose to play it out elsewhere. It could allow you to get all the more value out of units like Engine Seer Augur, because heavy use of that unit could serve to flood your HQ with supports, or you could play Interrogator Acolyte as many times as possible to, in a sense, transform excess resources into a wealth of additional cards. So, probably the most straightforward of all of these signature cards, but certainly something which lends itself to combos. You could even use this on an Elysian Assault team to not just get one initial surprise replacement effect from that unit, but by returning it to hand after it leaves play, this could afford you a second opportunity. For instance, you could sacrifice a unit to Kota as, put an Elysian Assault team into play, in response to that interrupt triggering condition, attack with the Assault team, then attack with Kotiaz, and then, during the next combat round, you could sacrifice the Elysian Assault team and, in response to that triggering condition, use the Emperor Protects as an interrupt to return the unit to hand. Then, the next time a Soldier or Warrior trait unit leaves play, you'll be ready able to put your assault team back into play during the ideal opportunity. It is worth noting that if you use the Emperor Protects on an Elysian assault team, it can not be put into play from your hand in response to its own leaving play, because remember that with interrupts, they always resolve immediately prior to the resolution of their triggering condition. So, whereas the Emperor Protects 
threats bounces the assault team to your hand immediately prior to it having the opportunity to enter your discard pile, the Elysian assault team cannot be put into play from your hand while it's still sitting on the table, because under any circumstance, the assault team is placed on the table from one's hand, and then the destroyed or sacrificed unit is finally discarded from play, then that interrupt window finally closes and reactions can again be played. So, this event is a simple effect, but it's certainly one with significant utility. It works with Kotiaz perfectly, and with so many appetitive targets to choose from, there are already myriad intrinsic possibilities. And, as our card pool still stands to grow and develop, there stand to be only still additional options in time. But, now that we've covered the fifth of our Warlord Cycle Warlords, that brings this video to a close. So I'll just end by saying thank you so much for watching, and I very much hope you enjoyed this assessment and analysis of our Warlord from the Threat Beyond. Please leave a comment sharing your own thoughts, opinions, and play experiences with our second Astra Militarum Faction Warlord, as your input on these videos helps benefit any future player who may one day end up joining our community. But with that said, thank you as ever for watching and if you enjoyed this content be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already or if you are already subscribed as ever you're always encouraged to share this content as the more views there are upon this channel the more likely it becomes that viewers may stumble upon conquest be exposed to the game give it a try enjoy what they experience and someday end up joining our community if at any point you'd like to get in touch with me, I would encourage you to do so through Facebook or on Twitter, and if at any point you feel so inclined to help me cover some of my file hosting and operating expenses, I would be absolutely honored were you to contribute to my Patreon. But once again, thank you so much for watching, and as always, be sure to check back in again soon for ever more Conquest LCG content to come.